transcendental functions. Now that may be a new term to you, transcendental, but basically uh, I'll just I'll just try to break it down as best I can. Uh, it's basically functions that aren't very algebraic, and what I mean by that is they're not polynomial functions. They're not functions that are you know terms that are added or subtracted. Uh, they're not things that involve uh, exponents. They're not things that involve radicals. Okay, so our transcendental functions are things like sine, all of our trig functions, sine, cosine, tangent, uh, exponential functions, logarithms. Those are examples of transcendental functions. So uh, even though it's a little bit different and obviously a different way that we uh, talk about it, uh, they're not too scary, at least hopefully. Uh, the limit uh, of the sine of x uh, as x approaches zero hopefully isn't too bad for us. Uh, we'll see if we can't uh, come up with how to, how to calculate that. Uh, luckily on these, again, first thing we always try to do is use direct substitution. So if you plug in zero, um, we're going to basically calculate the sine of zero. It's been a little while. You can do this different ways uh, using your unit circle. The angle zero would terminate here. And therefore, that is associated with the order pair 1, 0. Remember, cosine is the x, sine is the y value. So therefore, we get a nice little value of 0. Another way to think about it, of course, is we could go ahead and use our, uh, the, oops, let me get to where I can write, uh, is the graph. So if we're talking about the sine of x, it would look a little something like that. That's awful. But uh, here's 0, so hopefully you could see that would also be 0. And let me back that up because I've just erased things on here. So on the next one, uh, our transcendental functions. So the limit of 2 plus the natural log of x as x approaches 2. Again, using direct substitution, we can just plug it in. So it's going to be 2 plus the limit of 2. And there's not a whole lot we can do to simplify that. Most of the times you'll want to leave things as an exact value like this, as opposed to typing this into our calculator and getting a decimal value. Uh, so just remember that as you're answering your problems, there will be times when you will use decimal. You need to be uh, accurate up to three decimal places if it's allowed. And then the next one says the limit of the tangent of x uh, as uh, over uh, x squared plus 1 as x approaches 0. So again, using direct substitution. Uh, even though this does have uh, a transcendental and an algebraic part, uh, we're basically needing to Treat, uh, treat it very similar to how we would all of them. So plug in the value of 0 and uh, simplifying that. Now tangent of 0, a little tricky. Remember some of your trig properties. Uh, it's the sine of theta over the cosine of theta. Well, uh, 0, here's our ordered pair. So cosine obviously is going to be a value of 1. Sine is 0. When you divide those two things, you're going to end up with 0. And then our denominator will be 1, and when you divide those, you'll end up with 0. One of the fun things about uh, your wonderful calculus is the calculus part's new and once you learn it it's not going to be the hardest stuff you've ever done but it's going to be very reliant on your uh, previous math classes to help you out like if you could not remember this from trig or pre-calculus or wherever you might have had it last this problem would be pretty tough so make sure that you're uh, still keeping uh, all those skills up there and uh, ready to go and the next one uh, it says the limit at of the natural log of x cubed as x approaches 3. So what we're going to do is use direct substitution. Uh, a couple different ways, and again, our background knowledge, uh, if you can't remember it, we can take that 3 and write it as a coefficient, uh, one of the properties of logarithms, and we can simplify that. The natural log of e, of course, is 1, and then times 3 will give us 3. So uh, there's some properties of transcendental functions.